get my worst nightmare come true. A family is in shock after a mother and daughter went on a camping trip but never returned. And here I am at home, wringing my hands, wondering where my daughter's at. He was, I would say, devastated. I think they had researched how to do it. They definitely know where Kayla and Heather are. One day we will find Kayla. Someday, Kayla will grow up and she will remember that she was lied to. My relationship with Heather was, um, I'd kind of describe it as extreme. I feel like we had somewhat of a infatuous love for one another and it kind of led to some problems. You know, the first time I saw my daughter back from the hospital, Heather told me she wanted to break up with me. I just kind of thought that was ridiculous. He went from being extremely happy to being extremely depressed. I remember how heartbroken he was. When our relationship ended, we didn't have any sort of custody in place. Heather didn't really want Ryan and Kayla's life. She was always uh, very difficult. She's very controlling. Kayla was never allowed over to our house. We always had to go somewhere public. She and her mother always blamed Ryan for um, ridiculous things. Um, you know, that he didn't feed her on time. He didn't feed her exactly what she was supposed to eat. Just silly things like that, you know, that weren't true. Heather was saying I couldn't see Kayla because she had some rare uh, health problems. And when the GAL went to research her claims, he found out that they weren't true. I didn't want to believe that my daughter's mother would say things like that and lie about that. It was clear that she was saying that to influence the court case so that I would have less time with my daughter. And Heather was not happy about that at all. Her whole family showed up and stared Ryan down. <laughs> they don't want um, Heather to not get her own way. Heather always has to have her own way. Losing control, I think that might have triggered it. He's really cute. He's spotted. to go pick Kayla up because uh, she had an extended weekend with Heather. Heather's father came to the door and he just kind of had a big smile on his face and said, oh yeah, they're not here, they're camping. And I said, you're kidding me. They, she knows I'm picking Kayla up. And he's like, yeah, sorry. And then he just closed the door. That's it. That was the moment that he'd been dreading because he always thought that was a possibility that you could just, you know, run off with her. My daughter was gone and I knew it. A family is in shock tonight after a mother and daughter went on a camping trip but never returned home. I basically had filed uh, missing persons for both Heather and Kayla immediately, but there's like a basically a grace period before they would do something about it. The weekend comes and it's like everyone went home and to their families and here I am at home, you know, wringing my hands, wondering where my daughter's at. Their uh, strategy was going to be, we'll just wait and see if her car gets flagged, um, getting pulled over or something like that. They 
and found out that her car had been sold in Georgia like uh, a week or two later after the abduction. The search for Kayla Unbahan has now moved to Georgia. Heather's a creative person. She likes photography and art. And that was her dream to live in Athens. I think she's always been a little extreme in the way she has wanted to live her life. Definitely seems like something she would be interested in doing is living off the grid. She may even be with her brother who um, also disappeared. Heather and her brother were very close. In fact, he moved to Georgia before she did originally. I think it's really hard to just disappear and go off the grid completely without some sort of plan. They found a computer with um, sites that he'd investigated for people who want to disappear. Organizations that would conceal your identity. I think that they had planned this in some way. I think they had researched how to do it and then plan was, you know, she would immediately disappear and then he would join up with her and somehow he is helping her. They may even be posing as a couple and just working for cash. I think they're just living a transient life. I don't even know if Kayla's going to school at this point because they're on the run. Heather's family knows where Heather and Kayla are. I am certain of that. One day we will find Kayla. Kayla, we will always take you back. We will always love you for who you are, no matter what happens. Kayla. I love you so much, and um, I want nothing more than to have you back in my life and have many years of good times together and, and have you be a part of everyone's life who loves you. I think there's one situation as unique as this particular situation. Everybody's a suspect in my eyes. Everybody. We've had sightings all the way to Texas. Let's give us back our kids. Somebody out there knows where these children are. I don't think there's one situation as unique as this particular situation. Chicago police launched one of their biggest searches ever for two missing sisters just 10 and 3 years old. Who got the baby? We've had sightings all the way to Texas. Let's give us back our kids. Somebody out there knows where these children are. I won't give up. And even if I happen to die before then, my spirit ain't leaving. I'm gonna haunt your ass forever. This is the home of Diamond and Tiana. These two youngsters was three and ten years old. This is the area that Tracy decided to bring and raise her family. This is one of the parks where the kids actually played at. 
Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a park uh, within a gated fence community. Uh, it's right there where their home is. Uh, it's just a short step away from the doorway. But on July of 2001, something happened to these girls. Two young children have been reported missing from the south side of Chicago. I'll never forget. This is the part I don't like. A beloved friend, he called, he said, Tracy kids are missing. And I'm, you know, what the hell? You mean Tracy kids are missing? And I turned to Channel 9 and there were Tiana and I were pictures. Or the TV. This is Doolittle School. This is the school where Tiana came with Diamond. When it was time to go in to the school, the assistant principal was at the door. And Tiana tried to sneak Diamond in there. And the principal told her, you can't bring baby girl in the school. If only he had let him in, they wouldn't be missing. It's my understanding that Tracy attempted to call home to do a, uh, a well-being check on the children as she does always. Tianda received a call at an unknown time saying there was an individual by the name of George at the door. Well, I still have to find myself asking which George. She didn't say a last name. She said George. Tracy arrived home from work. She called out for her children. There was no response. Upon going over to the sofa, she noticed there was a note. It stated that Tiana and Diamond had actually went to a local grocery store into the park. But for Tiana to leave a note was kind of suspicious because she would not have left a note. The grammatical structure um, and the sentence structure was not the way Tiana spoke. So we found that to be kind of strange. Now it's time to put boots on the ground because we have a really serious situation where these two young children are missing for real. Chicago police are leaving no stone unturned in the search for Chianda and Diamond Bradley. To this day, one of the largest searches in the Chicago Police Department in history. They decided to put all hands on deck. They decided to do something that no other law enforcement has ever done. Bringing in cadets right out of the Chicago Police Department Academy, searching for these children by air, by water, to determine the fact where could these kids be. Unfortunately, the girls lived around a lot of folks uh, that were sexual offenders. Let me say, everybody's a suspect in my eyes. Everybody. But there was a sex offender that was actually in the presence of Tian and I that was an acquaintance to their mom. And I recognized him from the sex offender registry in, in Illinois. We actually interviewed that individual. Turns out that he was, you know, nowhere around at that time. tip that did come out of Texas with a young lady sent out through the girl's Facebook page uh, that, uh, hi, I'm Diamond and Tianda. I got a message saying that, um, Auntie, this is Tianda. And I'm like, okay. But then the girl starts sending pictures of a little baby saying it was Diamond's baby. We sent the FBI down there to take a closer look at it. Upon interviewing the young lady, we found out that this young lady was suffering from some mental illness. A lot of people can say, I'll pray for you, or I'm sorry, but they don't know how those of us with missing family members feel. If I had to describe hell without the heat, that would be it. Oh, thank God for Facebook. I had put up a post with Tiana's last school photo, and four different people contacted me. And these were little three girls that she went to school with, they stated Diamond and Tianda was down there playing on the playground. 
and that they did see Tiana walk up to a Caucasian person who had on a trench coat, some glasses, and to this day, they wonder why did this white guy in the summer have on a trench coat. But to me, that was vital information that should have been shared 18 years ago. It's our understanding that somebody returned back to that apartment and took possession of those children. We encourage people from social media to continue to bring in those tips, and we want people to know that they are continue to be anonymous with those tips. We need answers. It's not fair that a family can't even get closer. You know, if they're deceased, don't they deserve a proper funeral? We're not going to stop looking for you. And if it takes my grandchildren to find these children, that's what we're going to do.